Uh, welcome, everybody. This is um, somewhat a breaststroke day. We're going to also show you some, um, some new things that we've been working on, and we're excited uh, about them. Uh, I've gotten too much spare time, so um, we've, uh, we've invented 40 or 50 different things for swimming and helped a lot of other companies invent, uh, reinvent things that they've been doing. And I think you've seen, if, if you've been with us before, you've seen a few of those things that we've been messing with. Um, and uh, I guess the most exciting thing I have to show you right now, I can't show you actually how it works and have the computer on at the same time, but it looks like this. Um, <laughs> see if I can get it. It looks like this and uh, see that red thing right there? Uh, all right. And so what that is, is it's hooked up to this belt. And as this belt is attached around a swimmer, it pulls on this um, vernier, um, velocity meter and it runs out to your computer and it tells you every centimeter of the motion of the athlete what their velocity is. Now when you combine that with video you can now tell exactly where in their stroke they're slowing down and speeding up and then you can run that backwards and sort of think back to today's day which is dry land what worked on dry land to make breaststrokers faster. What we don't want to do, at least I don't want to do, is become a fitness coach. I'm not a fitness coach. Um, I know that my swimmers need to be fit to be successful. But as we've talked about many, many times, training is specific. And we'll say that in the, um, we're going, we can go right ahead, Bridger, to the, uh, the slideshow and uh, go on from there. Welcome, everybody, and glad you're here. So let's go to the first uh, slide. I think the very, very first slide. There we go. That's the day. All right. Next slide. I've got this thing in the wrong place. No, that's not. Is that the next one? All right. I guess it is. No, that's fine. Let's go up. Up. Thanks, Bridger. All right, so we're going to reiterate. If you're over three degrees off in the motion, there's 360 degrees you see here on the left uh, caliper. If you're over three degrees off in the motion, Dr. Yesis said to me when I was in college, then you're not training that motion as effectively as you should. Imagine how far we're off in some of the exercises that we've been seeing on the web. How far we're off when we're running for breaststroke how far we're off even when we're doing something that Dr. Yeses helped bring the United States, which was plyometrics. There, are, there is a need for all of those exercises, squats, plyometrics, et cetera, but they are off a lot more than three degrees off the motion. So I bet everyone on this forum has seen um, that swimmer who has had incredible squat ability, incredible ability to run, but was not a very good breaststroker um, relative to world-class breaststrokers. Um, and you've seen that skinny little breaststroker like they had at Nova as a 13 year, just a 12 year old and made Olympic trials and ended up with a silver medal at 13 years old and the 200 breaths. Scrawny little thing, probably had a lot of trouble just squatting her own weight, much less a lot. And yet because of the way that she swam breaststroke, how are we doing Bridger? Because of the way that she swam breaststroke, she, um, you know, she was better. So we want to talk about those things today that you haven't been seeing on other forums, that you may not have seen in regular weight rooms, that we don't see at LA Fitness. Um, we're going to try to show you some of those exercises, but we're going to show you some regular ones too, just with the idea of what breaststroke is supposed to look like. So we never leave a wall without a measurable goal. Now that's the difference between a fitness class and a swimming team to me. Um, we never leave a wall without a goal. So if there's, it could be just a simple thing like how far can I glide? It could be a simple thing like how did I plant my feet on the wall when I took off? But we want to find every possible thing we can find. And when you look at, listen to what Bill Sweetenham, probably the, the most uh, decorated uh, international coach I can think of, Bill Sweetenham, the Australian national team's coach, et cetera, the British national team coach, brought them out of nowhere 
to um, amazing, and they're still pretty good because of the impact you had on them. He said, we leave no, no stone unturned. And that's what we're going to try to do a little bit of that today and get that started. At the end of today, you will uh, eventually, uh, when I finish it, we'll have a report card or sort of a, of a dry land sheet where you can click and you can see some of these exercises. You can click <laughs> and put your own exercises in there. And then you can send them out to your swimmers to do in between practices. Of course, right now, it's maybe all they're doing, so it's a great idea. So let's see this uh, pulley system in action. Now, now, why is this related? Why did I bring that up first on a breaststroke day? Because I see all kinds of things about how we're supposed to swim breaststroke. And yet, almost any coach can say anything when there's no feedback. You know, there's swimmers just plain old fitter and faster and stronger or taller or whatever, and they get to talk, just like I get to talk. But if we can actually figure out where they're strong and where they're weak, we then can go on purpose with a real purposeful attitude to what to do in the dry land room. So let's watch this really quickly. I won't be able to show you a lot right now, but uh, eventually I'll be showing a ton of this because it's a new invention of ours. It will be out within the next week. Oh, we need to see that though. Oh, I see. Okay. There we go. Good job, Bridget. <laughs> You're always better at me. Now, my bottom of the thing has a bunch of people on it, so I can't tell you what the graph's saying. But if we could go through, Bridget, can we go through a little bit more like frame by frame on this or, or just slowly? You can see a bunch of things wrong with this swimmer here. This is the swimmer of the gut. Pause. Can we pause? Can we back him up just a bit? Yeah. Okay. Now, first of all, most of you can tell immediately his head position's in the wrong place. But what I'm not seeing here, let me see if I can move my, yeah, there it is. As you can see here in the graph, and I don't think you can see my cursor, but in the graph, you can see there's a down part of his velocity right here, and it's related to his head being high, his hands are even in the wrong place, can't see what his feet are doing right now. Now, we're also designing it so that a, a camera will go at exactly the same time. It'll follow your swimmer exactly at the same time they're doing it. It's really going to be amazing. I'm thrilled about it. The only place I've ever seen these kind of things are Olympic training centers. I think um, Dr. Gary Hall has one. Um, and there's, a, there's a few people with them, uh, but they're too hard to use and they're too expensive. Ours are going to be, you know, under 500 bucks and any coach is going to be able to use it. So this is a coach centered thing. Most of the things I've shown you the last couple of weeks have been swimmer centered. All right, let's watch him again. Now watch right here. Now if we back him up, now he is starting to get some force. You can tell right about here. But back him up, you'll see that he didn't get any force when he was pressing out. Now watch. Now we're not talking about force, we're talking about velocity. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Right here, no velocity, he's looking horrible. He's kind of looking over at the camera, so who knows? I mean, this is just the uh, scientist's son. Okay, bot pause. Notice, he's pressing out pretty hard. He's getting a great lat workout. So if this were a, um, a fitness class, man, he's building those lats and he's building his, you know, his exterior um, deltoids. He's just getting a good job out of this. But we don't want our swimmers doing this. Because if you take one hand away here, he's going to push himself sideways. This is why training has to be super specific because this guy could be fitter than the guy that beats him and stronger. Okay, now he's got some force right here. You see the force starting to go up in the bottom thing and his elbows are dropped, so it's not a lot of force. Look at, his, look at the angle of his hands, not a lot of velocity. I keep saying force when I mean velocity. So he's got force, but not a lot of velocity. Now he is not a breast, this is a butterfly, a butterfly, not breaststroke. Sorry, we didn't have breaststroke yet. We just did this. We, you're just, you're looking at this two days after I got the machine put together. So, but you get the idea of what the scientist was showing with his own son, dropped elbows and see some other things here. And we'd be able to, on the real graph, be able to see how much force as compared to uh, swimmers you can think of, like the 42 seconds, uh, you know, 100 butterfly or et cetera. All right, all right, so we can go to the next slide. This will get you the idea. So again, we wanna link all of the things we're doing here into what really works in breaststroke. Go to the next one. So this is uh, something I'll show you another time, but this is our velocity. It's actually called the smart pulley system now because if you watch this video online, you'll see these mission swimmers just going absolutely crazy over this machine. They're yelling and screaming, hey, I got a, a 6.5. Hey, you're not quite under seven and et cetera. And Mark Schubert and I are just standing back 
watching them yell at each other. It is, it is awesome. And he just told me yesterday how much he liked it. This is a video I'd like to show you, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna pass it. I want you to see this though. This is called, you can go online and see this on YouTube. It's called um, Breaststroke According to Moses. It's about Ed Moses' breaststroke. And you're going to see a guy that's, you know, almost a generation removed from the breaststrokers we have today, swimming better breaststroke than most of the swimmers we have today. Probably 99% of the swimmers, 100% of the female swimmers that we have today. And Ed Moses has that good of stroke. But the thing I like most about that video for your athletes, and I would send it to your athletes, is when they interview Ed Moses, he's talking about the stuff that he came up with in order to um, make himself better at breaststroke. So here's a swimmer who starts at 17 years old and becomes really, really good as, a, um, as, a, uh, as an older breaststroker very, very quickly because he became involved in it and, and not just the coach telling him what to do. Let's go to the next one. So this is the analysis stuff. The analysis movies um, we'll be showing you are, um, are of some world-class breaststrokers. We're linking that once again to, you see some of these exercises right here, this thing should have actually started, they should have started moving. Make one more click for here, let's see if that. Nope, okay, back up again. Um, so anyway, these are, these are, yeah, they should have all started, but that's how I set it up. But you can see some of these things are good for breaststrokers, some of these things probably aren't. And so we're gonna pick and choose today based upon the movies you're gonna see next. So now you've got about 15 minutes to watch uh, breaststroke underwater, go ahead to the next one, underwater, the way that um, the way that it should be, and in some cases, the way that it could be even improved even amongst world-class swimmers. All right, let's go to the next slide. So these are our planning, some of our planning things that we, you've seen, and some of those are, are, are available online. Uh, the best way to get them is uh, one of my books is called The One and Only Pool Book Workbook for Advanced Swimmers. And uh, uh, Bridger has some great software he'll tell you about. Um, and then we are redoing Pool Coach. And this is all, a lot of this is part of Pool Coach. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about this later. All right, next. Now let's watch those videos. Okay, now, now uh, Bridger, you're gonna open up uh, that movie that has the, um, the underwater videos of breaststroke. Everybody wants you to pay a little bit closer attention than you've paid maybe even ever before and have your swimmers kind of do the same thing as to why breaststrokers swim fast and what they can do to swim faster. Okay, nice and loud, Bridger. I don't hear anything. Brokers by uh, looking at some of the examples here. Now, we're not necessarily saying that these swimmers do the dry land exercises that I'm going to show. Uh, this is to say that these motions and these rhythms um, have something to do with what we should choose to do in dry land and um, perhaps some ways that we can um, come closer, maybe even beat some of these people. It seems at this point it's going to be very difficult to beat this guy, Adam Petey. We're also going to show a race with Adam uh, getting clobbered here underwater uh, with Vandenberg. And this is the, kind of his breakout swim. We're going to see what he does better than Vandenberg. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, Kitajima, who has an outstanding rhythm. And uh, then we're going to take a look at um, Chepkov to see what uh, similarities he might have. Um, we actually have a pretty bad video here of Chepkov, but I wanted to kind of show you why Chepkov dominated this 200 race and um, why he came back so much faster than everybody else and how they killed themselves in the first half of the race and let him have it. And uh, I think it's something that he's really um, planned to do. And again, when you see this race, I think you're going to see something about what I was talking about, uh, sort of an advantage that I've had in my career, having had Dr. Mike Yeses, who edited the Soviet Sport Journal, and was able to um, come to the conclusion that if we're over three degrees off in the motion on dry land, we're not improving uh, the motions we're gonna need in the water optimally. So if you keep that in mind and you look for dry land exercises that are specific, everybody else is doing all the other things, the squats and all that stuff. What if, what, what, what if we can do some things that are, um, uh, I think in some ways uniquely um, facile 
in terms of making our swimmers faster. So let's take a look at our model swimmers first. We always want to do this. We even want to, when we get back to the pool, we even want to look at ourselves swim and then see that as com in comparison to the dry land exercises we're doing, which we should also either have a mirror or have video on to see whether or not what we think we're doing is what we're doing. So let's see if what we think these guys are doing or what they're doing. Now this, in this case, we're not starting at the beginning because of our time constraints, but we're underwater right now and we're watching Vanderberg just smoke Petey in the first 50 of the 100. And let's see what happens next. And then I want to kind of go back and take a look at it. So here's Vanderberg just way out ahead. This isn't even close. Doesn't look like anybody's going to beat him. And here's Petey catching him and passing him. Now, the naked eye right there might not have been able to see anything except PD caught him and beat him. Even back here, it doesn't look, it looks like a really close race, um, but, he's, but he's way ahead. Now let's take a look frame by frame and see what we can notice. And a lot of coaches don't notice this at first. So just see if, if you can get what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm after here. Okay, now the PD is on the right, Vandenberg is on the left. He's the guy you just saw underwater ahead by a good body length and a half. And let's see if we can figure out what happened here, what PD did better. See it? <laughs> it's hard to see. Everybody's thinking legs. So that gave you the hint right there. What's the difference in their arms? I realize this is kind of a tough film to be able to see that, but let's go back again we do have the advantage of being able to go in slow motion and backwards and forwards. And this is not what Rowdy Gaines is talking about. Uh, it just isn't. Rowdy wasn't a breaststroker. Um, so look at Petey's elbows. I want you to watch his elbows. You see how you never lose sight of his elbows? His elbows are always in front of him. Now remember, he is at full speed here. He's trying to win. I think it's world championships. He's trying to win. Now watch Vandenberg's elbows. Now Vandenberg did not look like this at the beginning. So I want you to look at how Vandenberg is failing here. When we talk about failing, we're talking about the weight room now. When we can't do the exercise the way we did at the beginning. When you're doing push-ups and suddenly, you know, you're bending or one arm's going in front of the other, that kind of failing. Now watch Vandenberg's arm, elbows. See him? Okay. You see him, first of all, are his elbows up my, or his eyes or his elbows leading the stroke? So he's petting the water here. He's got nothing left in his arms. And now watch his elbows disappear. See that? His elbows disappeared underneath him. He's up. He's high. He's throwing his arms forward. He's actually getting white water pushing forward. And then he's going to do it again. The elbows are going to go way, way out, which is okay. But look at the elbows. Look at that bend. He's trying to do a pull-up. And that's probably what he does for dry land. I know Petey does too. But he doesn't have any rotators left. And we've talked about this the last couple of days in the other strokes. And we'll show this in dry land and what to do about it. And Petey, though, his hands are in front of him. He's pulling back. And he's pulling hard. But his arms throw forward immediately. Vandenberg is up here. He's on top of his arms. He's done with his pull. Everybody probably agrees with that. Now let's go frame by frame by frame by frame by frame by frame. Now he finally goes forward. And this is where he's trying to win at the last stroke. He just has nothing left and his arms are all tied up. You watch Petey, his arms aren't tied up. He's right in front of himself, right in front of himself. And he throws that head forward first and then drives the legs. So we want to see some more of that. But I just wanted you to see um, what's going on in terms of getting fatigued. And then we have to come up with some reason why. And you could say, well, he just doesn't, you know, Vandenberg just not as fit. Well, Vandenberg's the world record holder come in here. So I think he's probably pretty fit. Um, maybe he went out too fast. Sure. Everybody could agree with that, especially when you get beat that badly in the last half. But what happens when you go out too fast is what we want to figure out, right? Is, is okay. He's out too fast. We got it. What happens to his body when he does that? And how can he train through that? Or how can he go out less with less, um, of those particular muscles that are getting fatigued. But I think most people think he's just winded and there's more to it than that. All right, so we have here. So this is Kitajima. And I want you to notice here the rhythm in Kitajima. This is not all of the Japanese. In fact, we see, we're gonna see a race in a second uh, where they don't, they don't pick up Kitajima's rhythm. But watch his rhythm. Look how flat his hands are there. 
Uh, everyone is there. But I want you to watch how quickly he gets back into it. Now notice how he's pulling. What's, what are his legs doing? Nothing. His legs aren't doing anything yet. And then immediately he throws his arms forward and then he does his legs. His arms go forward and then his legs. He's a little late, but not very. Now watch his hands. Is he pushing in or is he flat? He's pulling flat. Pulling, going flat. He's not pushing in towards his hand toward hands. This is why I don't show any female swimmers to my female uh one-on-one -on -one lessons, especially the elite ones, we don't show any of our female swimmers in the world because everybody thinks for some reason if they push in hands toward each other here, they're going to go fast. And that's just not the case. So watching Kitajima's line and balance is outstanding. And we have a video of Ed Moses back in the day doing the same thing. Really great line here. Then he throws himself forward and then he hurries up his legs into position and throws himself forward much later than most swimmers. Okay, so what you're gonna see here is a race with Chupkoff. And once again, just like the PD race, Chupkoff is getting killed and it's a 200 and he's way behind. Okay, so what you're seeing here is, uh, it's one of the Japanese, actually both of these swimmers are Japanese swimmers. They are not Kitajima. They're Watanabe and I forgot who else. Whoever this is, is winning and he's taking it out in 101. So, okay, he's tired too. We go into the turn, we spin the hips, and we'll talk about this on the, on, the, uh, on the turn day. And this is really not a very good turn. Both hands are just useless right here. And that's just really not a good turn at all. So he's got a technical problem there. His feet are sort of weird. Um, not really getting a real good jump. One leg's higher than the other, but he's out in streamline pretty good. Funny thing is, if you watch Chupkoff, no, it's not Chupkoff. I'm sorry, it's the other Japanese swimmer. Look at his streamline. Isn't that beautiful? If that was your seven year old, you'd probably fix that. And this is the Olympic, or uh, this is World Championships, I think. So now we've got a good streamline, a good pull down. And watch this guy. First of all, he's, he's opening his hands during his dolphin kick. So why even dolphin kick if he doesn't think he's going to go anywhere? Now, why doesn't he just pull? So he's out here, he's kicking, but he's going to get water in between and hit him in the head. This is not Chupkoff. And now he's going to do his pull down. Pretty good rotation of the arms. No white water. And here he's kind of lifting up instead of back. But good, good, good uh, you know, turn there. Now, at the meantime, Chupkoff is killing these guys on this pull down. And so here we come. I don't like this recovery. There's not a lot I like about this stroke when you consider that Kitajima is a role model for Japanese swimmers, I think. Um, he's throwing his legs there. He's real wide. His head's way up before he actually gets connection with the water. So we're seeing some problems here. Actually, I think that was chucked off with his hands wide off the streamline. So now let's watch a little bit more of this race. I want you to watch, oh my gosh, let's turn it again. Uh, congratulations. All right, so now he's gonna make the turn. Watanabe's out here making that turn. Chupkoff's way behind, way behind, way over here. So we saw the two Japanese swimmers here. Here comes Chupkoff, now watch this finish. Now watch his elbows too, he's at full speed. You can see his elbows the entire time. How about, well, couldn't see the next one, I just don't have time to do that much of analysis but i want you to get the idea before we go into dry land what they're doing right and here comes chupkov just flying if that were just pulling if it were just pulling you'd have to say you'd be happy with your swimmer right watch it pretend this is just pulling in practice look at that turnover and the point i'm going to make as we go into dry land is you should be able to pull like that and you should know your time in pulling, and you should keep trying to get it faster and faster. In fact, if your legs are in streamlined position, if you get your arms strong enough to be able to keep using the rotators and steady your lats, you should be able to pull almost as fast as you can swim, if not faster. And there are swimmers that do that. Okay, the last one is Mr. Petey. We have to watch him. All right, so one thing I want you to notice in his pull, notice, have noticed in his pull down is he doesn't cheat. He doesn't dolphin, he doesn't do an extra dolphin, he comes up and snaps. Again, we're watching him throw his head forward, 
into a very fast turnover, elbows stay in front of his eyes, very fast recovery. And that's a real clue to going fast is a very fast recovery. Hands get out of the way before you kick and you get a nice streamlined position when you're kicking. You want to be in a streamline when you pull and you want to be in a streamline when you kick. Now this again is full speed of 56, a 100 meter breaststroke. Okay, let's watch Petey here going forward. Let's see if we can get him frame by frame. Not yet. All right, here we go. So we're going to go frame by frame here. Let's back him up. Let's look how wide he pulls. Notice as he's pulling, there are no leg bends as he's pulling. Now he throws his arms forward as fast as possible. He was so fast that even frame by frame, it's hard to see how quickly he's got his arms forward. He's starting to bend his knees just a little. The arms throw forward with the head completely down before he even catches the water with his legs. So when he kicks, he's in a very, very streamlined position. So it's not just the strength that he has, it's how he uses his strength. He gets his arms out to almost 100% of his height he pushes back on the water. Notice here, he is not pushing sideways very much. He's pulling back. In fact, he is pulling sideways just a little bit much for my taste, but he's going back here. He's pushing back. Now that he's done pulling, how quickly he gets into position in order to make to take full advantage of his kick. He's not pushing them together. He's not staying up in his pull. He gets immediately down and into his stroke. Immediately down and into his stroke. Now watch this guy next to him on the left side. Watch what his elbows are doing. Oh, let's try. Look at his elbows. Getting down past his shoulders. His hands are lost right now. How is he going to get him forward? Okay, you see him? How's he going to get him forward? Now his legs are in a streamlined position, but it's almost a bad thing because look, he, he's taking forever to get his arms forward. He's already starting his kick and he's still in a very bent position. And now he's finally getting into a streamlined position, but his legs are halfway through the kick. Watch Petey as he goes through here. He's in a streamlined position and then he kicks. Okay, watch that again. He's in a streamlined position. He pulls as hard as he can. Very strong puller. And then he goes in streamlined position and then he kicks. And his kick is more narrow than almost anyone's. So he's not dragging as much water. He's not getting as much out of his kick as some kickers but he doesn't have to push much across the water either. He has less resistance to get across the water. Elbows are really quick into position. When you see him at full speed, when you see him at full speed, well, this isn't full speed, the whole thing's slow motion. See him at full speed, it's really hard to break all these things out, but that's what you're looking for. Now, this is impossible unless you have strong enough arms. And by arms, I mean shoulder rotators. I mean, I do mean some biceps. I do mean some triceps as contralateral muscles to the movement. Of course, we mean some lats, and of course we do, but we don't want to think lats. We want to think shoulder rotators, and the lats is sort of a secondary motion. So as we're, when we're in the weight room, now we're in the pool, we're going to rotate these shoulders, but we've seen in a couple of shots before this that if we're too, if we're too, um, fatigued in the shoulder rotators, the lats aren't going to save us. Look, his lats aren't saving him. He's turning over, but he doesn't have any water. All right. That's it for now. Well, that's how we have to do it uh, based on the technology that Bridger and I are, um, are using with Zoom. So um, that was recorded last night, at least it was uh, somewhat articulate, but um, I didn't get it perfect, obviously. But I think, I think the idea is now to kind of put that into your head. We'd really rather see it side by side as we show these exercises. And when you, when you do this with your athletes, it's, it's a great idea to show them, okay, this, this is what he's doing right. This would be wrong. Now let's do the exercise. So if you're doing a pull, you know, we've shown you a few things in the last few sessions where you've been pulling from the ceiling or you've been pulling from the ground or whatever, and, um, and, and you could do them wrong. I mean, you could just do them wrong. And so you did the exercise and you wonder, why am I not getting faster? So, you know, as you know, with one foot in science and one foot in coaching, another foot in communication, 
I mean, I'm just describing every swim coach right now, not just us. Uh, we get a little more time. Of course, I've been around it more than a lot of people. I think this is my 50th year. Um, and um, I just, I think we've, we've gotten some advantages. And we also know what coaches haven't been able to do. That, boy, they always wish they could do. So um, we're going to show you a couple things here. We're going to show you a brand new device that, um, it's not really much of a device, that we're going to use for dry land that I designed it actually kind of a generation ago. This is a little slicker looking and it's something your swimmers can, can buy from us. You could find a way to Mickey Mouse it um, and it'll work probably just fine. Um, you know, we always like our stuff a little bit better. You want to be a little bit careful about um, how it's set up and, and that kind of thing. You also want to be careful because the first thing we're going to show you here is not isokinetic. And then the second thing we're going to show you is the very best breaststroke whip kick exercise I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them, but I don't think anything is, uh, comes close. But we're going to show you the, uh, the compromise that they're going to be able to do at home. We do have a couple swimmers that have $2,300 swim benches at home that do this. And in fact, when you see the, um, the report card or the, um, the, the weight exercise, the dry land exercise pro, um, sheet that we finally put out, it's going to be probably a week before we get it out. Um, you're going to see some of our best one-on-one uh, -on -one swimmers doing whip kicks at full speed, at literally faster than they can do it in a pool. Um, and Eliza, we're going to do this, this one pretty slowly at the beginning. Okay, go ahead and lock yourself in. So we're going to unplug here, and then we're going to go take this over and see if we can see Eliza getting into this. Now this bar that you see, maybe you don't see it, I'm going to get it. Yeah, go ahead and take off your shoes, that's fine. All right, so Eliza's getting out of her shoes while I uh, try to aim this so that I can just hug it down. Okay, so our bar here is uh, it's not connected to anything. So she's going to actually hold it up against the wall. So anybody that doesn't have something where they can put it in the wall, these two uh, screw holes here are 16, um, 16 inches on center, which is how most houses are built. So when you, when you, if they screw it into the wall or if they want to, if they're using a bench or something for this, they'll screw it into the wall. Otherwise, they can just hold it with their hands. We also have hand things for this to do pulling. But this is, we're going to show you whip kick because this is kind of the hardest thing. Now remember, three degrees off of the motion. So she, we could be doing squats, and we're going to show you squats in a minute. But when we show you squats, I want you to remember how different squats were than what you just saw her do. All right? You ready to lock in? Yep. All right. So she's going to put the cuffs on her feet. Let's go stay in there a little bit. She's going to put the cuffs on her feet. This is the first time she's seen this. This morning, so yeah, he made it last night. Yeah, so <laughs> we invented it. it yeah, we invent things here. <laughs> but um, but again, I, over over I don't know 20, 30 years ago, we had one of these in in the uh, in a weight room for us, and then we didn't actually bolt this that to the wall for a while either. So we're just gonna have her hold on to it. And she's gonna do this on the ground. Now she could do this just as easily on a bench, but I just want to kind of show it on the ground. Now. See if we can see perfectly. Okay, go through a full a full kick. Good. And again. Good. And up and hold and pivot those feet out. Now notice we're not putting the band on her ankle. Now when you really know someone doesn't know swimming, if they 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 prescribe an exercise like this and they put the band around the ankle. And I'm not saying who, but there's people out there doing that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy thing. Um, back to the bath that we talked about yesterday is they came out with a with a with a plate on the back of it, which was a really good idea. But again, the plate is really narrow, and you can tell the guys that the, the best that is a running coach and a runner, and that's what runners do. Just like uh, the swim bench we're going to show you in a minute, that was done by kayakers, and they did a lot of good stuff, but they didn't get it completely right for swimmers. So turn your feet out. So she's even got these a little bit high, kind of like they have them right around here, yeah. and right around her, the ball of her foot, right around the ball of her foot, because that's going to rotate her foot out here. Now, later on, we're going to show you an exercise where we actually just isolate this motion. Um, it's called a hankle. I think we showed it the first day a little bit, just kind of as a, a broad um, exercise that we do for whip kick. But um, we're going to go after the foot first, and we go after the arm. All right? So, ready? Go. And go. 
And go. Get to grip on it. Yep. You don't want that thing taken off on you. Okay. All right. You ready? All right. Let's get a little bit straighter here. All right. Let's go 10 straight. Back. Ready? Go. Boom. Boom. Two. That's three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ankle. Ten. Good. Now she got a little bit um, straight there and I yelled ankles at her. So she's going to have to feel that rotation. I think if she gets this, this, this thing a lot tighter around her ankle, not around her ankle, <laughs> last thing I want to do, around the ball of her foot, she's very ticklish, so I got to be careful. Um, um, so she gets that a little bit tighter there. She's going to feel the, a lot more of this. We have to be careful where we tie this knot that she doesn't get too pulled. We were messing with her when we just got her into this while we were off screen. And she was, um, wow, getting a stretch out of that. So, um, of course, this is one way she can stretch. She, if this were um, screwed to the wall, uh, bolted to the wall, again, when you bolt to the wall, make sure it's really, really strong, stand on it and stuff like that. But when you bolt it to the wall, then she can have then that full freedom to be able to do stretching or other exercises. Also, she'll be able to put hand uh, parts into it and do her rotators too. I really like this thing. First, we, we, we put one on the ground. It didn't uh, work out well because it was the wrong angle. And sure enough, when we ran a correlation coefficient between that and, and, uh, and the swimming whip kick, we didn't see as much of a difference. So, anybody have any questions about this one? Richard, anybody there? No questions yet. No questions. Okay, okay, pop out of that. And let's pop you over to, you yeah. know, okay. And let's walk over to the one that we think is the best ever designed. And we'll tell you why there's a difference. But <laughs> that's pretty good. The one thing I don't like about that, yeah, jump in on here. You just go ahead and get yourself in there. Is that the band, you know, wants to pull her back. And that includes when she goes forward. So there's a snapping, you could see she was sort of being snapped forward. Um, or snap, yeah, snap forward, and that's okay, but I would be a little bit careful about it. We always want to be talking to our swimmers about how their uh, medial lateral ligament feels and um, how all of those muscles around the, the, uh, the stabilizers around the knee feel. And uh, we'll show you some contralateral muscles to make sure that she's strong enough, uh, but we want to make sure we're paying especially attention to that when we're using bungees or we're using um, myo bands or anything like that. So some of you are probably already in your minds creating ways to be able to do that without, uh, without my bar or maybe any bar, either wrap it around a table or whatever, but we actually have some control this way of, of how far apart our knees are. All right, so she's getting in now, hopefully nice and tight around the balls of her feet. You can see her strapping into this. Now this is an isokinetic device and the, the definition of isokinetics is that she provides the resistance. So in the bungee, that bungee has that same resistance and we can use thicker and thinner bungees, but in this case, she's 100% controlling that of uh, this and so she can go all out. The other thing that, that um, defines isokinetics is there's, there's no eccentric contraction. That's the contraction that makes her sore and doesn't necessarily make her better. Could, plyometrics do have some, but it doesn't make her hurt. And especially when she's in this sort of uh, obnoxiously um, dangerous position, you know, most, most gymnasts have to be very careful about stuff like this too, but she's in this position where she's, she's outside of the range that the body really is designed to do, but she's got to do this in order to get enough water. So start whip kick. See how I'm doing here. There we go. Steve, can you tell us a little bit more about the last device that Eliza was holding uh, on the ground and where the tension comes from on that compared to this? Okay, Eliza, hold on just a second. So, so they want to know how that, that other device compares to this one. Is that what you're saying? In terms of the resistance and the tension, and also what is the name of that other device? Huh. Have we named that other device? We haven't. <laughs> we literally don't have a name for it. Um, just, call it just call it the breaststroke device, all right? Um, for now, and we'll uh, we'll come up with a name. It'll be on the website tonight. Um, there are a number of our other uh, inventions on the front page of the website where you guys have been downloading the spreadsheet, and so competitiveswimmer.com. Um, 
Now, here's the negative. That, as I, I just want to reiterate what we just said. The negative of the other one is that it whips you back and that it has one resistance. Well, it's a continually more and more resistance. The good thing about that is, in a sense, that's how your body works too. You're stronger as you come up, come up higher in the resistance. In other words, as your legs extend, you're actually stronger, and the bungee is actually more resistance as you go through. So, you know, it, it kind of does some, that's kind of good. Now, when I say kind of, I'm not talking as a scientist, I'm barely talking as a coach in a sense. Now, is it improving her, her, uh, and she uses thicker and thicker bands, and we'll give you thicker and thicker bands so that you can choose. Um, as she ties it a little bit tighter, as she goes through half or a quarter, three quarters of the exercise, she can get a heck of a muscular exercise out of that, no doubt about it. But it's not, again, very scientific. You got that on. So on this one, this one, the harder she pulls, the harder she, um, the more resistance she gets. Let me see if I can. And she's messing right now with the computer. There's a computer on this one that shows her in watts how much force that she's generating. And she can write that down and progressively get better. That's another really good thing about this. The other thing that a coach, a, a great coach wants to do is then, okay, as she's improving in this, is she literally improving in the 100 meter or the 100 yard whip kick or the 25 whip kick or whatever you're, you're, you're measuring it against? And that's kind of what we want to see. So the difference is a much more scientific uh, the movement is pretty close. Now, I'm going to show you one other thing that no other swim bench ever thought to do, and we didn't do it yet, so I'm going to do it, is that, again, some of the other swim benches are not designed by swim coaches. And anything you see here, if, if you have a reason that I got it wrong, we'll fix it. <laughs> but, uh, and that happens a lot. So we have this interaction with everybody that we can. So we're going to open this up and make it wider. And that's something you can't do on a, you know, on a VASA or a, who else makes Halo. It's always, you know, pretty much one thing. Now, the good thing about the Halo is because it uses bands, you could um, put the resistance farther and farther apart. And we have underneath here, I can show it to you sometime. <laughs> this place is kind of tricked out. Underneath here, there's a couple of those rings you saw for, for um, vertical pulling we do in the garage here. Is that um, we can, those are wider too. So you can make those right for you. So if you tell teaching people to do this at home, that's what they do. But this is adjustable, and we actually have measurements on the adjustment. We're going to go ahead and take this to the most adjustment. When we have really tall swimmers, six, 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 seven on here. Um, you know, sometimes we don't think we've actually got it right, so we can actually um, raise this and we start them a little bit higher and farther up. So you're seeing some advantages to this, but again, this is 2,300 bucks, and they don't even make it because they weren't selling enough. And they might make it again, but you know, I'm, I'm, I was thrilled with this part of it. Okay, now let's see her all out again so you get an idea. Ready? Nope. Yep. Uh, no, go about the three quarters speed. And call out your, call out your watch. Ready? Go. Nice and loud. Right. Louder. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's go. Go again. Okay, pause for a second. Now, when we test this, we got this, this was surprising. So I called North Thornton and North Thornton had this, I think I told you guys earlier, he had a whole weight room of these kind of isokinetic things. And um, it, was, it, was, it was just an amazing, uh, way, way before it's time. And they had 52 Olympians in there just going crazy. So I called him and I said, okay, I got a couple of these machines out of that room and we traded them for some things. And I said, you know, I'm basically going 60 seconds on and 15 seconds in between. And Nort said, we used to do that too. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He goes, we reversed it. We go 15 seconds on, all out. And we go about 60 seconds in between for them to get over what they just did and get to their next exercise. What we found on this by going all out is that she can only go, she'll, she'll, we'll go right now and we'll try to find out what her maximum is. Absolute match. We we're going to find out about is after about eight or nine, ten seconds, very much in line with cream phosphate energy, part of the energy spectrum, she won't be able to go anymore. So we can still get her to go endurance, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But if we want to build power, we have to let her drop. So if you're thinking about putting this into the thinking this, this whole thing into the pool, and you've had swimmers that aren't getting any faster, but they are getting fitter, so their 500 is getting faster, but doggone it, they're 
for five 100s, you're getting pretty close to 90% of their best 100, and it looks like they can't go any faster, you're not giving them enough rest in the interval. Or, the other side of the equation, they're not going fast enough. So if you give them, and here's what we figured out in our software for coach, we need to give them at least, it depends on the swimmer, you know, if it's different, if it's Dressel, then if it's me or, you know, somebody that goes, you know, 20 seconds in the 25 free. But um, we need to give them six times at least as much rest as the effort in a full creative phosphate exercise. In other words, we're trying to get sheer power. So watch your ball out. She's got to call out her time. Go ahead. Steve, Steve, will you turn the camera, please, so we can see the feet? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're seeing me more than yeah. Thank you. And tell me when I've got it right. Yeah, you're. I'm sorry. Not not time. You're gonna give us squats. Yeah. Everybody, everybody see her okay? That's good. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So ready? Call them out loud. Ready? Okay. Ready? Go. Okay. 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 Don't don't just get out of there. I get it. Forty-two. Forty-two is the highest so far. That's it, huh? Forty-two. Yeah. Okay. Now that's it, and that and that's true with me. It's true with uh, other world-class swimmers we have in here. That's it. That what you just saw her do was all out. And by the way, if you want to improve her power, you just did it. Now we have to give her six times at least as much of the rest as the effort to try to beat forty-two. Now, when we first do this with people, we don't tell them what's good. In fact, we don't even tell them how to work out. And then I get on. So they get off. Eliza's seen this a million times in here. <laughs> they get off. I go, let me give it a try. And then I get on, but I yell and scream like I'm in a karate class. I'm like, ugh, ugh, ugh. And they're, they're like, oh, you mean I'm supposed to work out? <laughs> you know, because swimmers are used to just, yeah, you know. You know, and if it gets really hard, it's not like wrestling where somebody's going to grab and twist off their neck. And so we get really kind of pansy about it. So then, now Eliza's got on 42. We're going to pretend that this is the first time she's ever seen it. And let's see what kind of energy she's going to give it to be. She's not quite long enough on this bench right now. And it doesn't get quite right. So she's locking up every once in a while. But that's a, don't worry about it, goodness. Just get back at it and go after it, okay? All right. We're going to do everything we can to be 42. Ready? I'll call it out. Grab on. Okay. She could have gone a little longer than that. We have had some people remember um who was it? Jared or Oh yeah, Jared got like three hundred. Jared kept going and getting better. So he was an endurance swimmer and we could see that in him and he continued to go. We let him keep going. So he would go a minute or two on this. Now we go a minute or two on this, but just what we were just trying to show you is what is she maximum power? Now let's take another quick look at the biomechanics of what she's doing. Go nice and slow, keep going. Let's look at the mechanics of what she's doing and look, look at how close that is to whip kick. Ready, go. No, not that slow. Okay, get some, get some whip out of it. Whip, there you go. Just whip and glide for a second. Good, and again, whip. Good, and again, whip. You guys agree that's the best dry land exercise you've ever seen for whip kick? Okay, relax. Now, um, what do you think? Oh, let's go with the um, hankle. Set, set up the hankle for us, okay? So, yeah, I love that thing. And I think anybody that's on this thing over here has a competitive advantage. Um, Eastern section is part of Southern California swimming. It's not a very good section within in Southern California swimming, to be honest with you. Um, it's, um, but we have, had, we have uh, two of the top three most improved, statistically improved swimmers that come here once a week for, um, for an hour lesson. But I think the biggest thing is the mental difference uh, that they have having had me go, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> kind of getting them into that. Um, that's the major difference. The other major difference is we are actually exercising the parts of the stroke that need to be that need to be done. And I never do a lesson without underwater video where they get feedback directly underwater. Um, and what their responsibility is for me as an individual stroke coach is to um, 
send me video of their races. I don't go to meet. So they, they um, I try not to ever go to one because if I go to one, then I don't, you know, don't think I like them more than somebody else um, or by, vice versa. So Eliza is getting into a mach uh, uh, another machine we've made. This is called a Hankel, H-A-N-K-E-L. The hip and ankle stretcher. All right. Yeah, I'm just, sliding on. So you got to make sure it doesn't. That's right. I thought you were ready. Oh, I thought you were all ready. Okay. I was. Okay, so she's getting ready, and I can't. I can't tell what we can see here, so I'm gonna put it on the ground. Everybody see that? Because I can't see it. There we go. All right. Now notice she's got a um, a fulcrum by the outside of her foot in this case. Just a little lower, if you can. Okay. Good, thank you. Right, and then we're gonna, okay. is that still good? Okay. Yes. All right, so now rotate, and again, rotate, trying to come out of it. And again, and again. Now let's move her up a little bit so we can see a little bit more what's happening with her hip. And again, yeah, we should have had some shorts on her, but it's kind of cold in here in California. I gotta move to a warm state like Florida. All right, all the way in, okay, good. And relax. And you can hear that, ooh, okay? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and do it the other way. So now she's going to go and step on the thing. Too. Now again, you can staple this to the floor too. If you've got room and you've got a little weight room area, um, it's, it's designed to be able to be put on the floor so that she's, she just steps in and goes. But she's now holding on to it. She's got it up against the wall. Everybody see it okay? And she's rotating outward. I'm going to get over here. She's rotating outward now. How am I doing, Bridger? Yeah, she's rotating outward and the outside of her hip is theoretically being the one that's worked. And she's also got an ankle joint being moved here too, so that she's getting stronger at being able to do those breaststroke motions. And I don't know if it's because we have so many breaststroke exercises in here, but it's her favorite stroke. <laughs> All right, relax. All right. Okay. So, um, now, in terms of, we tell you to measure everything. So it's very hard to measure how much resistance she had right there in uh, external rotation or internal ro uh, rotation. Um, so really, all we can do is measure how many she can do in a given period of time, how thick a band she's using. We have different thicknesses of the bands, how thick of a band she's using, how many reps. And then again, we want to correlate that to at least once a week doing a whip kick um, chest set. So if it's a 25, 25, just don't let them cheat. Don't let them pull into the wall, especially in a 25 yard pool. Don't let them cheat because they'll, they'll get a better time, but then they'll never be able to break it when you call them to not cheat. But usually the swimmers, if they're used to that and you're posting it on the wall, you know, like we showed you here, we're post, uh, maybe post their dry land stuff up on a wall like this. So if we post these track sets up on a wall, the swimmers will keep each other um, honest. <laughs> they don't want to be beat by somebody who cheated on the on the set. So that's how that works. All right, let's go ahead and go looper. And we'll show you a couple more legs and then uh, we'll show you some arm exercises for breaststroke because I think the future of breaststroke, the present of breaststroke is the leg. You don't have a good breaststroker that doesn't have good legs, but you don't have a great breaststroker anymore that doesn't have, I don't know if this is going to work. I'll move, go ahead and move it. Yeah. Everything is super portable. Uh, pretty much everything has everything wheels. Everything has wheels, and everything that doesn't is light. Yeah. We park cars in here. <laughs> All right. So you're okay? It's a nice shot, Eliza. Hurry up. Stand up. You're okay. All right. All right, so you got, uh, I think we showed this the other day when she was on a circuit. But um, let's look at it in terms of this is the, the best um, power exerciser for the, is it, you all set? Okay, you all set? All right. But look at it in terms of the movie you just watched. Okay, here we go. Go ahead and go some nice smooth ones until you're ready to start, turn off. Whoa, he's part of it. Yeah, there you go. Good, keep that back flat. Eyes up, good. I don't like those feet turned out. Let's push them in. Okay, go ahead, about shoulder width apart. There you go. There you go. 
All right, now she was already kind of used to having her feet apart, but I just don't like that much uh, torque on her on her knees. Okay, keep going. Just an exercise. No. This is one of the hardest ones for her. Okay. What? Now, you tell me. This is going to get loud, guys. <laughs> I don't think I don't know about that. All right. Well, you get me from the side? Okay. All right, let's try from here. And I can't see your feet, but I can see pretty much the rest of you. Okay. Well, okay. I'll yeah. Okay. Ooh. All right. So this is this is called a lever. These are still available, but they're not cheap. All right. So I'm holding on here. It has no resistance on the down. It's just a little bit of weight. So again, no eccentric contraction. The advantage of it is. I can go full blast on this thing and not worry about my knees getting sprung against the floor. So I can stand like this, and this is just uh, it's actually a little bit easier than it is if I just stood like this without anything, because I've got a little bit of stabilization. But on the way up again, I'm gonna I'm gonna push something and see if I can get to do this without being too winded afterwards. This is up here. Okay. Yeah. As positive it is, man, is that a workout. That's using my glutes and my quads. It's actually got firing my hamstrings a little bit to, to counter the, the motion. It's a great workout. The negative, that looks like whip kick, doesn't it? If it, it's at the right speed of whip kick, maybe even faster, the motion of whip kick is almost at the left at the right speed, and that's not an easy thing to do. If you did that with a free bar. First of all, the way down is going to be really tough. And the really advantage of this is you're about seven times stronger from here to here than you are from here to here. Seven times. We measured it. I mean, the normal human being, the way that our mechanics are set up. But when we're swimming, if you watch PD's breaststroke, he's getting somewhere at the very, very first part of his kit. So he's very strong there. Steve, when you do that, are your feet flat? Are you on the balls of your feet? Yeah, I, I use the balls of my feet. And I try to jump off at the end, too. Yeah, you couldn't see my feet very well. It's pretty hard to see here. Thank Good you. Good question. Yep. Um, but again, I just, uh, I think squats are a really good thing, but I also think they're a really good thing for your competitors to do. Let them slow down. Let them, let them go so slow on squats and so much um, strength on their squats and not speed it up. If you did heavy squats and you didn't measure your whip kick time, I think you'd, uh, I think you'd beat that person by just making sure you're improving your whip kick time. Now, putting the two together, great idea. Different times of the season, absolutely. Isokinetics can be used the entire season. Um, so they can be used right up in the taper because they don't make you sore. The soreness comes from the eccentric contraction, the part where you go down. So I like plyometrics, I like squats, I like free weights, don't think I don't like any of these things. But I just think there's a massive advantage to, um, to doing it right. I'm gonna show you an exercise that I had to do because I got hurt in basketball. I shouldn't probably play basketball. <laughs> I think I told you earlier I hurt my clavicle. Well, a couple of years ago, I hurt my popliteus. And I'm a biomechanist, but I, I'm a practical one. I don't usually think popliteus. It's this muscle in the back of your knee. But it turns out that it's a really important breaststroke muscle. So I'm going to show you an exercise. Ready, you like it? You're just aiming at me right now. I'll just show you this because I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I don't think Eliza's done this. So I'm taking a thick band here. Maybe a little bit more. And all it is is the round band, fairly thick. You can get it anywhere. We don't, I don't even know if we sell it, but we, um, we'd have to get it to somebody else anyway. And all I'm doing is it lies a little bit more, a little bit farther down. Yeah. Yeah, a little right there. Thanks. Okay, so what I did was I just walked away from the band on something very solid. Again, if you're going to tell your swimmers to do something like this, you better, better have that caveat. Um, from here, and I'm straightening it out. And again, there's this little muscle that's getting something from that. And from the other days when we just went the horizontal axis strokes, I'm sorry, the vertical axis strokes, 
with flutter kick and dolphin kick, this is actually a good, a good exercise too to stabilize everything. And you're gonna feel it really different than you do a straight leg, um, a straight leg uh, extension of the hip. So anyway, great exercise. You do it with both legs, obviously. Um, and there's a bunch of other things you can do with that. So, so that said, that's some of our leg stuff. Um, let's go a little bit more leg. Show them uh, stretching on that. Uh, yeah, on this one right here. It was right there. I don't even know what that's called. This? Yeah. The foot rocker. The foot rocker. That's what it is. This is not us. By the way, it's not us. We used to sell. We actually brought a whole bunch one time and sold them, but. Okay, so if you want to have trouble, find it. Hold on to the surface, stabilize, and rock back on the ankle. Now there's two ways she can do this. She'll do it with a straight leg. Let's see if we can get down here. And now she'll do it with a bent leg. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, now show them a regular stretch on the ground with this. Just, just, just put your foot on the ground and stretch the same way. No, the same way. I see, you try to put your foot up. Now step, stand back and stretch. The foot goes forward, the foot goes forward, and then stand back, <laughs> stretch. Here you go. So that's one way to stretch. And now let's go the other way. Now go toward it, put your foot back and stretch. Lean into the table. Good. Stretch your pants. Okay, so she's stretching there, not perfectly. She's stretching there. Now bend your knee and stretch. Did it feel different? So one is, it, one is her, uh, it's, it's two muscles in the calf and she's stretching, depending on which one, whether she bends or she gets straight, she's stretching them both, okay? So the gastrocnemius or soleus, she's stretching both of them, really important for breast strokers. Okay, could you make sure they can see me? So where I really learned about this was actually kind of funny. Now they gotta see my feet and me, go back up. Okay, can everybody see my feet? Yeah, Richard? Okay, so I'm at a convention and I'm a young coach at a convention. I have one unit of physical education. I was a writing major. So I raised my hand and John Urbanchik is in there and he's got, um, he's really close with Joseph Nagy, who's probably the best breaststroke coach ever, probably still from Hungary and he's translating for him as he's talking about how Mike Behrman, who was uh, just like three seconds past with everybody in the world and Rock Santos and some swimmer from Spain, Sergio, uh, I can't remember his name, but anyway, how he has three people on Curl Burt. He only coaches three people because Curl Burt gave him a special group and all three of them made the finals of the Olympic games. Um, what's the chance of that? So anyway, um, so I, I raised my hand and I said, what's the most important flexibility that a breaststroker can have? Is it ankles or is it knees? <laughs> well, you're, hopefully your knees don't have flexibility going outward because that's not a good thing. But I would ask that dumb question, not having a single unit of biomechanics. I went back to school to get this degree. So I was paying really close attention when I went back to school. So I remember kind of most of what I learned. So, um, so he said, neither. And I said, huh? He said the hips. And, oh yeah, duh. So when you saw us invent this hankle, it's based upon something a little more intelligent than I was at the time. But the cool thing, or not so cool, weird thing about Behrman is this exercise here, which a lot of dancers do, where they turn their feet out. And I'm not really good at it. I'm not a bad breast worker, but not a great one either. Behrman could turn his feet all the way around and walk backwards. Ah. Yeah, it makes you go, ah, just to think about it, right? So his hip flexibility was insanely good, and that made him great. But I would seriously doubt if Adam Peaty can do anything like that. I haven't seen it. I haven't asked. Um, probably ought to ask her, ask his coach. But um, I haven't. Um, but, but you want to get as flexible as you can without causing a lot of any problem when you're doing that. So as we talked about yesterday, in terms of gaining flexibility, I'm gonna stand here for, for just a minute to give you the idea that you need to stand there so your brain will release the stretch reflex and you gotta take your time. 
So I guess we could stand here for a while. And if this isn't hurting my knees, thank God. Now, some people have very, very tight knees and have to be very careful about doing stuff like this. And so those people and probably the rest of the students we need to use rollers and, and uh, all the stuff that you see other people do, they use rollers and roll themselves out and lay on things. I think those things are wonderful. I tell my athletes in college who are perfectly fine, I shouldn't say this publicly, is go into the physical therapy people and tell them you're hurting <laughs> and tell them to roll you out and give you a massage. Um, I think the more you can do that, the better. And parents, if you can learn, if you can teach the parents to, uh, to do that, you're probably better off in terms of the uh, modern day, uh, you know, we're following all the bad people, but uh, we're making sure that you're not supposed to do rub downs on the tech unless you have a degree in it. So, but anyway, have the parents do it or have them learn to roll out. I think that's all great. Um, we've also learned that when we showed you the ankle the other day, I didn't mention this, but if you're going to stretch your ankles, for example, if you'll stand on a ball, and roll on the ball on the bottom of your foot, your ankle will actually release the stretch reflex a little quicker. Also, when you saw us move the ankle up and down and then go to stretch, the brain will release the stretch reflex a little quicker then too. So all these little hints might help you, but again, nothing will work unless you measure it. Let me show you uh, one more thing on that. Didn't that mean at the floor? Oh, bridge your news off my hand. Sergio Lopez, now head coach at Virginia Tech. Yeah, you saw, you met Sergio. I did? Yeah, you met him at oh, the uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we spoke at the Ipsy Convention, Sergio was there, and I, I didn't forget to mention him. All right, so Ipsy <laughs> and me. So now, picture that this were round, because in Sergio's case, I'm sure, in my grandma's case, I'm sure I know, and et cetera, we can measure how much flexibility you have in the hip. Can you see the book? Can you get a little closer to me just so we can see it? I can see it. Is he okay? All right. So, you know, let's say I'm trying to get out to 180 degrees. I'm not quite there. So whatever, I see 160 right now. The object is, is to measure everything you possibly can. And this is one thing you can, one of those things you can measure. All right. Um, let's go to the upper body. All right. So now let's go to pulling. Um, it doesn't matter. We talked about this yesterday in the meal. It doesn't matter how strong you are in a pull-up, that doesn't make you strong at breaststroke. And I hope I made my point today by showing you that Petey is beating people because he's not failing as much as they are. Everybody's failing a little at the end of the race, but he's not failing as much as most people. Now, I've only seen him do exercises like this. I've only seen him do heavy pull-ups with weights in between his legs, and all that stuff again i don't think that's bad i just don't think it helps it helps the motion that he's going to need later it might help him to have built muscle and overcome the toughness of training and make him tougher and stronger in that way but in terms of making his shoulder rotators stronger you know this doesn't work the shoulder rotators this does and somebody brought up the other day, but yeah, but aren't you worried about wearing out the, you know, making them tired and wearing them out and stuff? And I am. And that's what we spent a lot of time yesterday working on, working on the, um, on the contralateral motion. So anyway, just to reiterate this exercise, um, I like it from the ceiling. I know Bridger does. Uh, you can, you can bend over and do it. Obviously our new uh, breaststroke from the uh, breaststroke bar. How about the breaststroke bar? Is that good? Anybody's got a better idea. That's good. So the breaststroke bar. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to attach handles to it. I'll show you that real quick. Stay right there. So you would take off the foot, the foot strap, and you would attach. You'll attach one of these. <laughs> A little more coordinated. Here you go. Attach one of these, and now you'll have handles, and you'll pull that away from, you know, this on the wall. Now, when you do that, though, make sure that you're not doing this, because this is going to feel like a great exercise if you do. Make sure you're not doing this. You do not want to do this in breaststroke. So I don't see any reason to make it stronger in the weight room. Unless it's to balance the shoulder joint. 
but you don't want to get them into a habit of pressing out from here to here. All that does is make them tired. Now, they're not going to like you for changing their stroke that way. They're going to think it's weird. I can tell you from the college students who did it. But they'll like you a lot when they do breaststroke pulling for time and they go from a 110 or let's say a 130 or a 230 and they drop 15 seconds. And then they go to their next race in the 100 breaststroke and they drop 10 seconds. Then they're going to like it a lot. But they've got to get it. They've got to get rid of this motion because it's a wasted motion. So that's one of the motions to get rid of. And that's a good thing. So they're going to slide out flat. Slide out flat. They're going to go like this because they're going to kick in this position. And the rules require them that they only do the streamlines off the wall. There's a rule against doing another streamline. So they can be here, though. This is nice and flat to the water, right? Nice and flat to the water. And then they can go slide out, which is really quick. Slide out and go right into the stroke. And then press into the stroke. Now. Here's where a lot of people get it wrong. Because in, in land sports, we teach people to have a follow through because it's dangerous not to. If I took a weight and I threw it and I stopped right here, my shoulder would be jolted. But if I follow through, it's good for me. And it doesn't hurt my shoulder. So that's the difference. So if you're a land animal and you came from land sports or you're a an exercise person trying to teach swimmers to do things, but you came from a land paradigm. We have a really well-known exercise coach who I guess worked with professional baseball teams. And I sometimes I see some of the exercises and go, wow, that's great for baseball because they follow through, don't they? But in breaststroke, our follow through better not be down here. And it usually is here. This is not the direction we were going anyway. We're trying to go forward. We shouldn't be going from out to in. We should be going from this sweep to forward. That's breaststroke. That's what makes us go forward. So the reaction to that is either follow through and do the rest of your fly, which is illegal, um, or we need to just walk it right back out. So people, again, they get used to doing this. And all of the time someone's doing this, Petey is already flat out there and ready to, ready to kick, right? So you get the idea there. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get there as fast as possible. Now, I don't know that something you can do in the dry land room is necessarily going to make you better at that, but I know something that could make you worse, and that's doing this and this. That would be a bad thing. Because then when they go in the pool, those little neurons are lined up in their brain, and it's going to be very hard for them to change it. So we have to make sure what they do in here actually works. So from this position, if, I, if you're underneath me laying on the bottom of the pool, and you see me get to this position, this is a lot of water. I've got water in my forearms. I've got water in my hands. I've got water in my thumb. And I'm going forward. My head's lined up, and I'm, my toes are pointed, and I'm going forward. But what do I need to do now? <laughs> Get in position. Got my breath, get in position. Got my breath, get in position. All right? So if they practice that in the weight room, even if they don't get stronger and they come into the pool and they've got that position and they go right back out here and then they nail their leg, you've got a fast breaststroke. So that's the idea. Okay? Um, now, that said, let's break that down just a bit. It doesn't matter how big my biceps are. And one of the movies I've linked it to the uh, breaststroke sheet that you're going to get up on my site is, is my friend P saying, you might have seen this one where he goes, don't try this unless you have these guns, you know, and they're like twice as big as mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe, but, but the thing is, he also has great forearms and great hands, and we showed you that the other day, so let's show you a couple more. Life of the switch we got. Well, let's go to the fingers, and I'll do the forearms while she's getting uh, something there. Okay. You. We'll give her right to the table. So this part, again, we don't want them dropping. If they get tired, they're going to start losing their forearms. So we want to do forearm work and finger work. Because forearms and fingers are weak. Just one at a time. Just go ahead. Just turn around. And just grab the hand one first. Show the hand. Feel free to talk. So these, you can tell, have little splits. And each finger is doing its own. Thing. So, of course, the pinky is the hardest because that's our weakest finger. 
So in a way, this is the lens we have to work hardest on. We can do it with both hands. Dad calls this the musical lens because he says people use this. Okay, while well, she's getting the next hand one. So that's, that's for each finger. So even if your little finger is weak, you're going to slow down and breaststroke pull. This is to make sure that the other side of the joint stays strong. I'm going to stand up straight. Now you can do this without this, uh, this thing on the back. I don't know the name of it. Some kind of a harness that we got. We think it's the greatest idea I ever saw. Saw it some, some place. I'll find you where to get it if you want. But it's, um, I don't know, it was like 50 bucks or something. And by the way, that's what, that, uh, that's what this bar will cost. That's the price will be 50 bucks. Including the handle. <laughs> so you get the idea, and I'm starting to get, I'm starting to feel this fatigue. Go ahead and show them the next hand exercise. Okay, so this one you're squeezing, and I'm not very good at it, so don't go completely. But you use two hands. Go ahead and use two hands. Okay. Show them with two hands. So these things are supposed to touch each other, and you can move this to make it harder or easier, and it adjusts the spring by making it tighter or looser to make it harder. To right, and then this one we've shown some of these things in some of the previous ones, and some of you might not have been there. Um, this is, I forgot where we got this from Walmart, it's the biggest seller of sporting goods in the world, so it might have been Walmart, someplace like that, and then this can be adjusted up and down and so you can measure it and write it down. We always make our, sure our swimmers write it down, they tell us how long they did it, we tell them how long to do it, and then how long, um, how many they got in a certain period of time. So if their best 100 breaststroke time is a one minute, <laughs> um, then they do this for a minute. Or if they want more power, then they crank it up and they go, you know, 10 reps until they just can't even move anymore. But they make sure to go full range of motion and all the way back. And then they turn it around and do the other side of the joint. You want to make sure that the, every joint you do, every joint segment you do are balanced on the other side. And you should be able to measure both sides. Okay, go ahead. So this is just like this spongy green thing that goes, I don't know, what is this called? Okay, the fitnessframe.com. Uh-oh, fitness. Oh, yeah, it'll work though. <laughs> Go ahead. And um, so you can see I'm opening up my fingers and it's, I mean, it's pretty flexible, but it's still kind of hard and you can move it to the tips. And, and we have another one that's got broken rubber bands right here, but you can put different sized bands in here and you can do the same thing, but we just we snap the band and, and that's time to replace it. Yeah. But that, that gives you a progressive amount so you know how many you did with a given band and how much time. And as that improves, you run a correlation. I'll do the next one and then you do this one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this one is brachioradialis. If you think about it in the breaststroke pull, you've got to be able to actually turn your hand, your, your arm this way, and it's not just biceps, it's brachioradialis too. So I call this brachioradialis, but it's actually the other side too. We want to work both sides. And we just have, you can do this with a broomstick. I've seen some bodybuilders do this with a, you know, like a broomstick or something like that. But again, you can't tell how much weight. So a lot of really strong bodybuilders will actually use a weight bar and put a weight on the end, and I just designed this thing to, to look fancy in my weight room. And so I can have different uh, weights here. Not a big deal. All right, so you can do that with anything. Again, getting stronger in the lower arm um, is actually almost as important, maybe more important than the upper arm, because as this fails, everybody here who's ever done a lot of sculling uh, drills with your swimmers realizes that you didn't do sculling for a long time, and they're on fire and worthless. So we do sculling in the front, middle, back, and all that. Someday we'll do another one of these when I just show what we do in the pool. I know all of us can't wait to get back in the pool. Okay, Eliza, I'll we'll show you the next one. Okay, so this one is, you can't see it, so I gotta do a little bit of it. But I'm just going like this. And this is harder than it looks, except it'll look harder in a second because you'll get to see the five pound weight that I'm doing. Okay, and I another go like this. And then once I have it all the way up, I go vice versa. And let it down slowly. All right, let's see you do that with straight arms. Oh, gosh. How about underhand? Go underhand with that. Oh. So underhand will work a little bit more like the, the, the muscles that she's going to need in the restaurant. Oh. She's getting some shoulder work here, too. So you get the idea. All right. So she's a little bit a little bit squirrely. So just from here, from here to <laughs> kneel down to here. We don't just let them fly down. They have to work it down. And when we give them a time to do as many as they can, uh, it gets to be kind of a cool thing to watch them. And I'm starting to go on fire right now. So again, I'm starting, you never shake hands with a world-class breaststroker that doesn't, couldn't just crush your hand. And they got that strength from really good sculling motions. Some people are just, have a great feel from the water from the time they were little kids. 
I just kept getting stronger and stronger at grabbing the water. And some people have to work on it. Um, I think everybody eventually has to work on it. Show them rice real quick. There's a question on that, Steve. Were you holding uh, still with one hand and turning the other hand? Is, is it one hand at a time? Yeah, you go like this. Yeah. Yep. Kev didn't have to do this. And he, go ahead. I'm doing it. I'll in again. So it's uh, two hands. Days of water water room clothes, that was actually probably a good thing there, too. So we're going to show you an artificial. Under there. No, Sorry, that. Steve. That wasn't quite clear. Is okay. it both hands alternating in turn? Both hands are going alternately, or is it one hand stays fixed? I just showed, yeah, alternate. So here, we're going to hold, right? That's in slow motion. <laughs> All right, so let's aim at rice. So we got a bucket of rice. Bunch of rice in here. You can use sand. You can go to the beach and do it if you live in that area. Put your hands in the sand. Go ahead. And then she's going to go, go open close. So what she's doing right now is opening and closing. We should have probably used a clear bucket. Maybe we could tell. From here to here. So both sides of the joint are being used. Now sculpt. And you can see her shoulder joints are being used right now. We think it's her hands, but actually she's using her shoulder joints. That's not a bad thing. So she can actually control that. Lock your shoulders and just do your hands. Yeah, just do this. And your elbow. Yep, now go. You know, she's really going to her shoulders. That's where her weakness is, or her, she's really weak here, so she's going to a bigger muscle. And we talked about that um, in, in, in flutter kick and dolphin kick, where people aren't keeping their legs straight on the up because they're not strong enough. They go to a bigger, they go to another muscle group and they help it out, but it actually slows them down. In this case, that won't slow her down. She's just weaker in the forearms than she is in the shoulders. So this is how I would, I would prescribe to her locking that up and just working on her, on her arms, and I would keep watching how she progresses on this. And that's what the eye of experience will do for you. All right? All right, go ahead and lock that up. That's a pretty simple exercise. Anybody have any questions while we're going here? Oh, we had a question about... Uh... So let Bridger, let Bridger come on. Anything else, Bridger? Not right now. Okay. Well, let's see. Well, you know, everybody's used to the regular stuff, the push-ups, the pull-ups. Um, now, we're going to show you one. You're going to stand on that. Go ahead and set that up. So rowing is not a bad exercise. It, again, not much like breaststroke. But, you know, build some lats, build some shoulders. Builds the back part of your large shoulder muscles, not necessarily your stabilizers. Um, just go, just go forward. Get it set up and go. All right, so she's gonna go. We, we put this on people, and sometimes, and this is one of our killer exercises we're here for two weeks. The main reason is she's gonna go against this little guy that's gonna try to beat her on the screen. The bad, that's, the, that's the good thing. The, the, the kind of the bad thing is it's not really a swimming. For, we're gonna show it in a second. Are you ready? Uh -huh. okay. Ready? So this is a rowing machine from the good old days. It has a little PC screen on it. Okay, so go ahead, keep going. <laughs> so Liza is about ready to fall apart here. And she's pulling between her legs. Go ahead and open up, pull between your legs. Good, and now I want to show you the screen. You set that up too hard, huh? No, I called it up to introduce Okay, she's a wimp. Okay, go ahead. It's really hard to go through your legs. Okay, now you aim at me. Okay. All right. Uh, I got it, I got it. Okay, so normally this would be, can you see me okay? Normally we put our feet in here, and we do this sometimes, we do some rowing, right? So now we're, the great thing I like about this is it's gamified. So it's a game. And everyone says this is the best machine we've got in here. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to stand up and use it a little bit more like swimming. High elbows. This is more for flat. Go between my legs. Yes. 
two inches of the spectrum here. We've got uh, Eliza and then her old dad. So probably we get a really uh, toned athlete in here to really here. take off on here. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Woo! She won. So far, yeah. All right. Well, you only have 15 seconds. <laughs> Steve, we have what else for Brett? Yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for that exercise. Um, was there another question? Let's see. Where am I, Bridger? Okay, so, Steve, there was a question on the exercise you just did um, <laughs> in terms of the direction of the motion and how in this to this uh, coach, it appeared that you were pulling – kind of down toward your legs and how well maybe that mimics the stroke not very well no okay. no you got that's perfect i mean that's that's great I'm, I'm glad to be challenged on that because it means i'm getting my message across about specific adaptations however i am breathing hard i was pulling back i was pulling down underneath my legs but but not very not nearly like breast exactly like breaststroke Ideally, we would, um, we would have a machine like that that was more like breaststroke. And actually, that machine is, is the one we showed you at first. We didn't show you um, arm poles on here. You want to throw some paddles on there, Elijah? Yeah. yeah, they're right there. They're hanging. So um, yeah, we'll show you a lot more specific. So I think we showed this at the beginning. We'll show this a lot more during Butterfly Day on, um, ooh, what did we say, Thursday? On Thursday. So we'll show you a lot more. But I appreciate that question at the it's a good challenge. It's exactly right. We were not pulling in, exact, in the direction of breaststroke the way we should have. It is better than rowing when we have our arms up here just kind of trying to pull back. But um, I'm also able to use my back, which of course we use a little bit in breaststroke too. Um, we haven't talked a lot about core work because on the other days we've shown a little bit more of that. But in answer to your question, um, is that okay? in answer to your question, we're going to show you a pulling in a much more, um, a much better direction. I'll see you. I'll have to get it for you. So, oh, and you need to see. Uh, if you, you can hear me as you're getting ready for that, there's another question about uh, shrugging the shoulders during the breaststroke. And if you have anything uh, for rehearsing the shoulder, shoulder shrug is the question. Yeah, I can do it. I don't know. Okay. I can, I can just hand it to you. So, as long as you can do it. Um, I don't think the shoulder shrug requires a lot of power. You know, you're not going anywhere when you do that. I think people think that if you do that, you're, you'll be leaner in the water. Um, and that's not necessarily bad unless you're going upside down with your shoulder shrug. Now let's take a look at me really quickly. And you can take a look at the video we showed you earlier. It'll be, when we post it, the video will be on there. But think about how, how I'm getting my hands forward like this with them upside down. Now let me turn them right side up. Notice, no more resistance. So, you know, maybe, maybe shrugging the shoulders would be a good idea. And I would think that if you were gonna do it, it wouldn't be necessarily against a lot of resistance. And everybody knows you just grab, just grab some dumbbells and shrug them up. You know, you can do that if you want to. I think that's a good exercise, but, but again, it's not very specific. To, uh, it's more like balancing your shoulders and kind of maybe even getting the habit of being able to do that. Um, but I don't think that's a resistive exercise. I don't think it's an exercise you've got to get a lot, a lot of strength at. It doesn't, there's no real resistance to it. In fact, that's the whole idea, right? Steve, we have an image in the video you sent uh, of Adam Petey of that shows this part, if maybe you could look at this and, and give us some analysis. The way Zoom's set up right now, I'm, oh, I can, okay, thank you. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> I have you. this is pretty clear going into a shoulder shrug, and maybe yeah. you can tell us what you see here that you like and don't like, so I'll try to go frame by frame. Really hard, I know. There he is. Okay. So from here, he has uh, no more water. So he's just trying to get those hands forward as fast as possible. By the way, I think this is actually somewhat of a stroke error with him, believe it or not. 
where he's a little bit upside down for no good, no, I'm trying to move things and I can't, uh, for no good reason. Um, see those hands? They really didn't need to go upside down before they went forward. And when you watch um, Kitajima, he does it better. Now, Kitajima is my height and weighs about 105 pounds. And he's a really, really skinny guy. So, um, so there's, a, there's a slight difference there, but I think, I think that shoulder shrug is, if you want to memorize, if you want him to memorize it, I think that's fine. Or if, if they're going to do what Eliza's going to do here, maybe she, you can teach her that. We can teach her that while she's doing this exercise. However, all the momentum is going forward. The water isn't really going to prevent you from doing that, we hope, because you should be pretty flat to the water there. And if you are dragging enough water that your shoulders are having trouble going forward, you probably need to fix that. Hopefully that makes sense. But I don't think the shoulder shrug itself is, uh, is that important. I, I, don't, I just don't think it is. I, maybe it is. I mean, we're wrong. All right, so you're going to do breaststroke pull. So, so what we've done now is we've taken the uh, swim bench, the isokinetic swim bench, and, okay. and we've got handles on them on it so you can see more of what we're looking for. Yeah. I'm happy to need a knee because of my uh, clavicle. All right, you got it? I got hammered playing basketball. Yeah, yeah that's still, it doesn't just go away when you're 67. It goes away when you're 11 though. All right, here you go. All right, nice wide pull, high elbow. Watch the mirror. Okay, so I'm telling her to watch, go ahead, do some. Not you got it. One. Don't worry about it. It's all the power you're using right now. It's accurate. See? No, I mean, it's just one minute. Yes, I know. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the mirrors out. Now you can see. That drives her crazy when she can't get feedback. So that's a good, go ahead. That's a good thing. Good. Wider? Yes. Wider than narrow. Yes. Okay. Now, let's see if she's doing it right. Let's keep going. Coach, we get the coach here. Let's see how she's doing. We go right to her side. See her arms all moving at the same time? Now, Eliza, I just want you to do the first half of the stroke. Stop. And back. And go. Ooh, starting to use those lats again. And back. Pretty good. And we want this elbow not to get past her eye. Ready? Go. See how she rotated her, medially rotated her shoulder joint? Ready? Go. Mm, yeah. Do you see what you did? Try it again. Yeah, you started, you started firing here. Ticklish. Go ahead, move your arms forward. I'm not going to tizzle you. I didn't do that on purpose. Okay, elbows up. Yes. Stop. And go. Go. Nope. Again, keep those elbows farther forward. Ready? Go. Yes. More. Yeah. Okay. And go. Relax. Yeah, you're a little narrow there, aren't you? Okay, try it a little wider. Go ahead. You're right, you would be. There you go. And back. Okay, let's hear from the front. Ready? Keep them wide. Go. Yeah. And back. Go. And back. Go. And back and relax. Okay, so that was a drill. So we're trying to get her to get strong at the front end. That's a really great thing to do with your swimmers, guys. I don't care how you do it. If they're holding onto a band, the thing is don't attach your band to the middle of the fence in a central locus. Spread out your band from here to here and get them to rotate here. Um, I had a really experienced coach come up to me at the ISCA convention and say, why don't you teach you people to just pull straight back the way that Ernie McGlishko is telling everybody to do because it's action reaction. And I'm not against that. But Ernie and I both know, and we taught it to this coach, is that you can't, your shoulder doesn't do this. It won't rotate when it's that impinged close to you. You have to have it outside in order for it to rotate freely. Now she was having a little trouble with strength in doing that. So her natural instinct is to bring her arms in, lower her elbow, and she was naturally instinctive to do that. So we kept her just doing this. And then she said, I feel like I'm just doing this. And we said, bring them wider. And that's the kind of interactive feedback that we need in order for swimmers to get really great. One more thing I have to say about that is try not to do another workout where either you or the swimmer doesn't see them underwater. Just don't do it. There's a couple of things. I had somebody email me offline uh, this morning about this. 
And they said, you know, we've got three GoPros, we've got this and that, but the swimmers don't seem to be doing what we tell them. I'm like, well, who's seeing the GoPro? So we are, the coaches. He goes, well, every time I go to work with a swimmer, I've got 24 swimmers waiting for me while I'm working with a swimmer. And I completely concur, right? And that's what, just part of our life as a coach, it's really hard. Hand this to the swimmer, have them turn it around when they're done and take a look at it themselves. And if you've shown them enough on a Saturday morning or whatever, they do Sunday morning on their, in their team to do um, Sunday morning uh, uh, stroke work, show them the ideal and make them memorize it. Make them take a test on it. How far apart should your hands be when you rotate? You know, and if, you, if they start saying 80% of my height, then they got it right. If they say 20% of my height, they don't understand it yet. And of course, they're not going to know what they're looking for on the video. But very quickly, they'll be able to see what they're supposed to see. You don't even have to be part of the equation until they ask or until it looks like they've got it wrong. Like in her case, we have to you know, jump in and say something. The other thing we're working on to the other side of that equation is we use communicators so we can talk to the swimmer the entire workout. And, you know, we got one now that they can go to an unlimited amount of swimmers through one of my walkie-talkies, and that's great. Communicator, I love it. I won't coach without it again. But, um, but I can't see underwater while I'm doing that. So I need, to, I need to do a better job of being able to do that, and we're working on that with, partly with what you saw earlier, but partly just to make sure that there's a, there's a bar that goes on the top of my, my eye swim here where it's held, and I'll be able to see it as well as the swimmer. So I can say, hey, you're too narrow. I can't tell if I'm looking underwater. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> uh, keep going. We're we're all set here so far. Okay. So what else? Let's go to core. So take those off of there, and let's go back to core. For those of you who weren't here last time, we'll go a little bit more to core. A breaststroker without a strong core uh, is, I don't know, a recreational swimmer. <laughs> Certainly isn't a fast breaststroker. So go ahead and just, uh, just lay out of this machine for a second. Watch out for your toes since you don't have shoes on. So this isn't Eliza's first time. No. <laughs> so we have, we have swimmers that come here that can eat her alive, but um, she motivates them to do things uh, tougher than they're used to in a lot of their practices. Again, we're in Eastern section. We get mission swimmers, it's another story. They're usually, you know, pretty strong and tough. Um, oh, I don't want my shoes. No, you'll be okay, go ahead. Just, just do it, just go out and lay out. So just lay out, good, and good, and come on up. Okay, so that's how she does it at first, and that's so that's beginner. Then the second one is, when we started to do this is, we'll go, we'll set up the, um, the um, beeper, beeper. You can use it to bat a trainer. You can get them online. You can use it on your phone or whatever. Yeah, yeah Felice doesn't make them anymore, though. So then we give her a red ball, and she goes for how long? 30 seconds, uh, right? We go 30 seconds, and then we have, what's, oh, 45 seconds rest. Okay, so she's just going to lay out now. Go now, in breaststroke, we're going to want her to move more. But right now, we're just, we'll just pretend she needs to keep that whole core nice and solid while she's doing pull. If, again, if her core fades, you can see me starting to drag water on different parts of my body. If I can stay here and tall and pointed while I'm pulling, I don't have to pull as much, right? And I'm gonna have a lot more left. We talk to swimmers a lot and say, the one who wins the race is not usually the fastest swimmer. It's the swimmer who slows down the least. And you saw that in a couple of races today. The fastest swimmer, you know, at, at the time the P first meet Vandenberg was Vandenberg. Not anymore, because PB now has the world record in the 50. All right, ready? And my last set for 30 seconds right now. All right, well, okay. You get me done with your workout. Get ready? Go. So she's just holding a line for 30 seconds. You can see her start to push the ball down toward her hip. She's not in shape anymore. And then, anyway, all right, we'll let her, we'll let her sweat. Steve, do you recommend these? So, so pretend we're on a set there, and they'll actually go through the whole medicine ball stack here. Okay, come on off for a second. Open up for you. And these balls. Do you recommend these exercises every day, every other day? Wow, that's a, that was a broad question. This exercise, abs, your abs can take a lot. So um, they can take a lot of abuse, so I kind of recommend it every day. But 
So Bridger, you and I have talked about this. These things don't cannot exist in isolation. If you've been doing a ton of dolphin kits and a ton of work on the abs and core in practice, man, they might not need that that day on dry land because they may be so exhausted the next day they have no dolphin kit left. And if they have no abs left, then everything else is falling apart. And that's one of the ways that we get shoulder and knee problems and stuff when they're overtrained. You have to keep an eye on what they can handle. And, uh, and there's ways to test that, and we'll have that built into Cool Coach 5. Uh, but there's ways to test how much more they can handle. And I, I highly recommend that. Here's one example. Uh, the Australian Institute of Support, uh, Sport, when Bill Sweetnam was there, they would have Bob Trapine, who Dr. Bob Trapine was a great sports scientist. On every Monday, they would do a series of 300. This is just a full freestyle set. Doesn't necessarily answer the exact question, but just get the idea, the metaphoric idea. They would set a set of 300s at a steady state. They tell them what speed to hold, and the swimmers are very good at holding that speed. By the way, if you don't have clocks on both sides of your deck, synchronized every day, I highly encourage that. You want me to help? Because that, that little tiny change in the atmosphere makes a big difference. Anyway, so they would go steady state. So let's say they wanted to average 330, just for sake of argument, meters, 330. And they would go 330, a series of three or four or five of them, at the beginning of Monday. If their pulse rate was too high, based upon their, their, um, the other tests that they had done over the course of time, they would either send them home to get well because they would predict that they were getting sick, or they would back off on the stuff that they thought they were gonna do because maybe it was a muscular thing. Their upper body was super fatigued and wasn't recovered since Saturday. I don't know if they trained on Sunday, but just get the idea. And so they would maybe go to the lower body. And I started to learn from that is that I would push lactate in the lower body on one day, upper body on the next day, and then maybe whip kick breaststroke on Wednesday, and, uh, and I got away with cycling a lot better. So very good question. It's not a perfectly easy answer, but I can help you to design that, um, and so can the software. Okay, so let me just show you how we do it and, and better and, and stronger ways to do this. So go ahead and start handing me med balls. Right? I'm just gonna go here, and she's gonna hand me a med ball. I'm gonna pretend I'm on a clock. I'm gonna hold it up here instead of where she held it. Maybe I'll do this. In breast, in breast stroke, I won't, because in breast stroke, we've got a vertical axis and the horizontal axis stroke. So I might come up here. Notice how I'm not coming up to here. When I come up to here, gravity is actually helping me. <laughs> There's nothing against me here, at least in terms of the, of the, of the abs, right? Boy, do I need this after sitting around for all this time and eating like a pig. Okay, so, so what I need from here to here instead, right? This is more like breast stroke. I could throw this ball. There's a bunch of things I could do, but I want to do it progressively. I want to measure and I want to write it down. And I want to see improvement. And then I want to take it to the pool and see if my breaststroke pull or my breaststroke, um, my breaststroke, full breaststroke are, are improving. And if they're not, then I don't know what I need to do, but I know I need to do something. So hand me a bigger ball. So just pretend it's going through. So one, four, and now the clock goes here. We go to six. Keep that straight up. And if I'm smart, I have a mirror here to be able to see what I'm doing. Next. I can actually do this on my own, but nice to have it. Better around? Oh, oh, you get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I need the workout, but, but you get the idea. So take that, take that idea as an, as an idea for, you know, everything else you do. How are we going to do it? How many sets are we going to do? We're, whoever came up with three sets of 10, and what does it have to do with swimming? I don't know. I, I do know that we, what you saw her do earlier on the whip kick and breaststroke pull and on the new breast stick, <laughs> breaststroke stick, breaststroke bar. Oh yeah, breaststroke bar. That's better because it has a alliteration. We call that in English. Um, you know, we'll have people go for as many kicks as it takes for them to swim the 200 on uh, breaststroke kick, breaststroke stroke. So they don't even know that. So that's a really good, question is, okay, did somebody kill me in your last minute race? Could you count your strokes, please? Um, I want to bring that up too, is if you're always dictating what they're doing, how, how bought into it, how sold are they on what you are telling them to do? But if you ask them and they come to you and give you the answer, you're far better off. Okay? Question. Um, Eve, I'll just add on to that comment you just made. Um, 
my dad used to say the best teacher and the best swim coach is the one who makes himself irrelevant or herself irrelevant that you teach your swimmers and your students to coach and teach themselves and the best coaches end up disappearing and because the swimmer or the pupil takes on the responsibility for learning and improving themselves. All right. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. And those of our uh, coaches that learn that, the, the youngest actually have, a, or the earliest have a, um, I think they have an easy, a better life too. You know, they're not taking responsibility for every single race and every single thing that happens. Um, the athlete eventually makes that, makes that decision. I, I remember being, because I'm such a German guy, I remember being haunted by learning that Flip Dar at Irvine at the time would give a set, he smoked a pipe, he would go up into his office while they did the set. It'd be an incredible set, like, you know, 100, 100s or something. And he'd just go smoke his pipe. Now, he had an advantage point where he could see them a little bit, but he wasn't yelling, wasn't screaming. And one time I asked him about it. He was interviewing me to coach with him at Irvine, and I said, what about that? He goes, hey, if they want to be good swimmers, they'll be good swimmers. They know what they need to do, and they had a couple people, you know, racing against each other. Um, I, I'd really like to uh, interview John Mickinen sometime, because I don't remember all of what I was learning there, but, but it was like that. It was like, and then when he would finally give him, give people their, his pearls of wisdom, they actually treated it that way. That, you know, hey, I, I've earned it and he's paying attention to me. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, we make ourselves irrelevant. But that said, we're irrelevant in the eyes of the swimmer. But, but it takes, <laughs> you know, it's like the saying, it takes years to become an overnight success. When you, the thing I was saying about, they just happen to have two pace clocks synchronized on two sides of the pool. That's what we do. We build an atmosphere where excellence is most likely to occur. That's all we really do well. Uh, taking splits, I tell coaches not to take splits. Anyone can take a split. On their first day of seeing swimming, they know to push a button when the person hits the wall. But while you're taking a split, that person is making their turn, going there underwater, dolphin kicking, making a breakout, and you're able to see whether or not they're racing or whether or not their technique is right all of that stuff, but you're missing it because you're writing down a split. So you're right, Bridger. I completely agree. And I just want to put it in that perspective where the right environment means that they know they better do it because <laughs> otherwise they're not going to get done. All right. My daughter knows that too. And she memorized 651 digits of pi. I mean, we just tested her, but she, how could I possibly have done that for her? All right. Um, so can you turn around the other way and do hyperextension? So this is much more relevant to breaststroke, by the way. We just showed you the core stuff that isn't as relevant to breaststroke. Well, let's turn this one. Or I guess since it's set up for me, I'll show you. Okay. We're doing the count. You said hyperextension stuff. No, I know it is, but it's the other way. Okay, so. This is what we're used to seeing on this bench. And this is probably a very good thing for breaststrokers. So from here to here. Because you have to have some strength in the lower back while you're pulling. And you have to have the ability in the lower back to keep you nice and firm here. If you're falling down into gravity and you're pulling down, reaching down too far in the stroke, and that's not a good thing. You want to go that way. You shouldn't be reaching down. But if you, if you have to, because you can't hold this position, and I'm starting to shake as I do this, because I've been working on these muscles, I can tell. So right up in here, how long should I be able to hold this in isometric contraction? How long, how long is my longest race? To me, that's the answer to that. Now, do we work into that? Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll do 10 sets of 10 seconds, and I'll do five sets of 15 seconds, et cetera. Then once I get really good, I'll use a med ball, I'll throw things and stuff like that. But you have to be really careful about that because this is not the breaststroke motion, this is. And then throwing everything forward at full speed is there. You don't want to necessarily add resistance to that. Okay, we're unmuted. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So, um, um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll next time when we go through butterfly, it's been requested that we show you more forearm exercises. Um, we'll try to do some of that. Um, 
In butterfly, of course, it's very similar to breaststroke in the first half of the stroke. I really like seeing my, butterf my breaststrokers from butterfly and my butterflyers from breaststroke, and sometimes they hate that, especially to get a breaststroker who's got great legs and <laughs> really like their upper body. I really like them to start thinking about how fast can I get 100 breaststroke pull, 200 breaststroke pull. We do 400 breaststroke pulls and stuff like that. I have a ton of drills we do in the water that connect to this. That unfortunately, we can't show right now, but I think as we get back into the water, maybe we can um, interact that way too. Bridger, unless there's something else, uh, let's go ahead and tell people when we're going to be back. And, uh, and uh, we're going to get this movie and everything. Okay. January 11th. We have zero cases in the United States. Zero. Thank you. 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 Thank on January 17th, excuse me. I can close my... Okay, hey, Bridger, how are we doing? We ready to wrap it up? Yes, thank you. Great job. All right. All right, so we'll see everybody on Thursday at uh, 1 o'clock, Pacific oh. Daylight Time, which is, doing? I think, 4 o'clock. We're doing... Why are you jumping in? Oh, oh so 4 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. And I know some of you are from different parts of the world, so we look forward to seeing you for a butterfly. And we'll try to answer your questions in between. You can get directly to me at steve at competitiveswimmer.com. And uh, Bridger can give him his information too. And um, thank you very much for coming. I think so. Yeah, uh, you're getting lots of thank yous. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. We uh, we thank you too. We'll see you on Thursday. Mm -hmm.